Hello friends, welcome to today's video. In today's video we are going to be doing a story time which was going to cover the main sequence of events that occurs when Luciano the Jumper arrives in what I believe is the first game of the Defeated Hero timeline in the Legend of Zelda um, vast timeline A Link to the Past. We already did our build video for that, but some of the key features that we did, some of the key features for those of you who are curious that we received are um, perks that make it difficult for us to be transformed against our will. We do have a drawback that is going to supersede that for the purposes of this jump, um, at least partially. Uh, a Wish for Peace, which is an incredibly powerful heroism perk that makes it so that when evil doers are defeated, some of their evils end up getting canceled out somehow. And also a hand crossbow, uh, powerful magical arrows, and the master sword. So those are some of the key features that are going to be worth keeping in mind considering this video and also future videos moving forward, as those are going to be some of the most significant things that we could get We uh, from this particular jump. We also ended up getting a uh, perk that further enhances our ability to be rewarded for the nice things that we do, um, which is also going to be very handy here. Um, our story is going to begin in the same cabin that um, Link and Link's uncle live in, um, or at least that's where our story is going to functionally begin. Luciano the Jumper will actually be teleported into Kakariko Village, but this is a setting where they actually have some meta knowledge, so they end up going over to the cabin and being there on the night that the adventure begins, so they end up hearing the telepathic message, especially because they are also descended from knights, so rather than Link being the last um, knight's descendant to still be around, there are actually two of them. I'll go ahead and say that the uncle that is Link's uncle is also Luciano's uncle, but that Link and Luciano are not siblings, they are simply cousins who were raised together in part and are able to um, spend time together as part of the background because Luciano is not a drop-in in the setting and does have a lifetime of memories. So when the telepathic message of Zelda beseeching aid is projected out into the world thanks to her sage abilities and her nature as a possessor of the Triforce of Wisdom, I believe that that was one of the aspects in this game. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But um, her abilities as a sage, if nothing else, allow her to project out a message beseeching aid and Link, Link's uncle, and Luciano are all there to receive it. Um, the uncle of both Link and Luciano urges the two lads to stay behind while he goes and attempts to go and rescue the princess, who is trapped in the castle and is in need of aid. When that ends up happening, Luciano ends up leaving shortly after the uncle does because he, uh, because they are determined to go ahead and rescue the uncle. Um, Luciano the Jumper does go by he, they pronouns. I've mentioned this before because sometimes you'll hear me slip up. I'm going to go ahead and say that they definitely prefer they, them pronouns because it's a self-insert of me. Um, but for a short while, I definitely went by both he and they pronouns rather than just they, them. Um, so, that said, that's just a thing to keep in mind moving forward. Um, Luciano takes off shortly after the uncle takes off and goes out of their way to follow the uncle, successfully rescuing them, um, from the corrupt knights and revealing that they know how to use a sword. They will simply lie and say that they have been practicing in their free time and that it is important that the uncle, who is old and who got injured in the fight but is very quickly healed by Luciano, head home to go and keep Link safe and to go and make sure that he doesn't risk his life needlessly. The uncle would normally not accept this, but having seen how deftly Luciano wields a legendary seeming sword, decides that it is okay and trusts the legendary, the soon to be legendary hero with um, his words of advice and to be careful, and the task of going and rescuing the princess. Luciano waits until the uncle is out of view, and then utilizes super speed to go ahead 
and successfully make their way through the castle, eventually finding Zelda, and by eventually I mean taking only a few seconds to find Zelda, defeating a handful of knights along the way, just enough to clear a path for both of them, and when they find Zelda, they swoop her up into their arms, and they use their super speed to get out of the castle. They get out of the castle, they escape through the back um a secret exit tunnel that Zelda reveals in the canon game um, to Link, and they find their way into Sanctuary, into the priest's abode, who ta- who agrees to take care of Zelda without any hesitation, and um, Link slash Luciano slash the uncle have officially completed the first part of the game. At this point, the main thing that's left is Luciano goes and does some quests for some of the different player care, for some of the different non-player characters. Um, they go and help out different people completing things and building up a reputation as an overall nice agender adventure. And eventually they go and confront the Dark Wizard, who is the central front-facing protagonist or antagonist for most of this game's runtime. They do successfully defeat the Dark Wizard, but not before the Dark Wizard banishes them to the Dark World. And in the Dark World, they begin to discover bits and pieces of the plot. Um, they also realize that drawbacks can, at least to some extent, trump their new ability. Um, they, rather than um, always being a rabbit, this version is sometimes a wolf, sometimes a bear, and is in fact able to fight, um, especially when they are in their wolf form, because Luciano the Jumper is just naturally a werewolf at this point. It has been numerous adventures since they acquired their werewolf alt form, and they have effectively mastered it. They also make use of some of their non-lethal weapons over here to defeat some of the inhabitants of the Dark World, as well as to rescue some others, um, making use of different abilities, most notably fairy tale magic, to counteract some of the effects of this world. They realize that the Seven Sages, who were some of the people who were instrumental in keeping Ganon at bay, have been defeated and have been placed in dungeons throughout the Dark World, and they realize that in order for everything to go to the canon plots, which is of a game they haven't played in decades, um, they need to go ahead and rescue all of the Seven Sages, defeating the powerful guardians that Ganondorf has, or that Ganon has empowered and positioned throughout the castle, um, not throughout the castle, but throughout the Dark World, and going ahead and doing that. It is not exceptionally difficult for them to do so because between the Sword of Evil's Bane and also their super speed, they cannot exactly be stopped in this setting, Um, especially with A Wish for Peace, which when it undoes a lot of the evil that happens, not only allows them to rescue um, and purify corrupted knights, also allows them to actually um, resurrect some people. Resurrected people appear in locations where they would be safe and where um, they would be able to explain what has happened to some extent to different people, vaguely recalling that the individuals responsible for their premature deaths have been defeated through supernaturally acquired knowledge, although they're not quite sure of the mechanics of how this works. Um, Basically, A Wish for Peace, which is the perk that is responsible for this, is a perk that allows you to undo the evil that some evildoers do when you defeat them in various ways. Um, How much evil is undone depends on how evil the evildoer was, but one of the big things that happened already earlier was with the downfall of Angahim, who is the Dark Wizard, whose name I am never going to try to pronounce after this. Um, Many of the corrupted knights who have been magic and have been turned against the actual kingdom of Hyrule and against Princess Zelda begin to regain their sanities, and Ganon himself is left bereft of an agent. He is able to go and find more people to corrupt. I'm not going to derail the canon timeline all that much with this, Um, but 
it becomes more and more difficult for him to do so as more and more of his agents are defeated by Luciano, who manages to find the magic mirror, which is the key to traveling back and forth between the light world and the dark world over the course of their escapades. Pretty shortly thereafter, Luciano has rescued all of the sages, and they have gotten used to the corruptive effects of the drawback, which allow them to still be affected um, by the transformative magics of the dark world, and it's something that is inconvenient. However, it is not something that is able to stop uh, Luciano. It's it's actually funny because this is one of the only ways that um, Luciano would be able to be t even inconvenienced in this particular setting. Um, <laughs> it is very fun to try and watch the different forces that are, um, <laughs> to watch the different forces that are trying to stop Luciano, because Luciano has become a powerful enough jumper that there really isn't anything in this version of the setting that could meaningfully challenge them. In some versions of The Legend of Zelda, in some games, Legend of Zelda games, there are things that might be able to stand up to Luciano, but because Luciano has been exploring um, other settings, most of which are lower power than Legend of Zelda, but has been gradually acquiring powers like telekinesis and super speed and flights and the ability to like hover places and glide places. Um, this version of Luciano has already become so strong that it, there really isn't anything here that can challenge them. They defeat all of the Guardians. They realize that Zelda is in danger. They go and attempt to rescue Zelda. Um, the final agent of Ganon is defeated, and when the final agent of Ganon is defeated, Ganon reveals himself and flies away into the Dark World into the Pyramid of Power, which for those of you who are not familiar with this game, is where Hyrule Castle is, but um, is in the Dark World rather than the Light World. Luciano the Jumper is easily able to follow after them. Um, they cannot teleport between worlds just they cannot teleport between worlds with single steps just yet which is a real shame there are different perks that could allow that to happen um most notably there are perks in both generic cartoon world and in one minecraft jump that allow you to teleport between mirrored realms like the light world and um the dark world or like the regular world and the upside down in stranger things um, or the shadow fell on the material plane in D&D. Um, that would be great for this particular purpose, but still Link is able to retrieve the magic mirror, um, use it, and reach the dark world, and they do end up going after Ganon immediately. They are able to cut Ganon off before Ganon is able to do much in the Pyramid of Power, and they engage the legendary villain in one final confrontation. They use their magical sword to great effect, easily deflecting various strikes from the powerful pig overlord that they're facing, and eventually they do succeed in striking down Ganon. When Ganon falls, much of Ganon's evil gets undone. Some of it is undone immediately, and countless people are rescued from his influence, as well as are saved in general, and even flatly resurrected in some cases, reappearing in their hometowns, whether they were defeated there long ago, or whether they were defeated um, only fairly recently, during Ganon's recent shenanigans with the Dark Wizard that they were able to use to try try and defeat um, the kingdom of Hyrule. And in the immediate aftermath of this, one of the big things that happens is that Zelda's father is resurrected as well. Um, so this is a good ending. I will say that this probably only takes a couple of months. Uh, if that, I could easily see all of the events of this game for Luciano the Jumper, a jumper that is uh, notoriously fast and agility-based, taking less than a week. But I will go ahead and say that this takes a few months and that this is another case like Super Mario 64, um, which was Luciano the Jumper's first jump, where they're able to complete the canon plot in a hilariously short amount of time. Um, in the immediate aftermath of all of this, 
characters like Link and Zelda and Link's uncle and Zelda's father are able to go and live peaceful lives. And I will say that one of the things that happens is that Luciano preoccupies himself with, for the rest of this particular setting, with honing mundane skills, whether it is doing farming or engaging in actual guard work as a knight, um, being a hero and training other people. I will also say that at this point, some of their other items become more relevant, such as their monster tribe item, which is an item from the generic barbarian jump that they completed, um, infused with Shrek, and and also other things like their business become more relevant um, because in certain video game plots, Luciana the Jumper is very much focused on completing the plots. Um, and I know that that means that this is probably going to be a short video, but even the drawbacks that we chose for this particular jump were not really enough for this particular setting to be all that incredibly difficult for Luciano the Jumper or a particularly long-winded setting for Luciano the Jumper to visit. Luciano the Jumper has the prerequisite skills to be able to do a setting like this in a handful of days if they are purely focused. But over the course of the adventure, they will be completing all of the side quests. They'll be helping people. They'll be just being an overall actual chivalrous image of a knight. Um, not necessarily the actual cold reality of a knight, but more the um, singular, more the singular heroic focused types of knights rather than being someone who is engaging in unchivalrous activities. They will protect the castle, they will occasionally fend off monsters while also training the monsters who are in their tribe to be better um, guards and to be better fighters and also to go and help out the people of Hyrule and the Dark World. It is going to be an interesting decade now that they have um, just uh, a full decade to relax and to explore this particular setting. Um, there aren't any egregious drawbacks or any long-term challenges for them to face. This is just going to be a setting where, despite the heroic nature of the actual story in the specific game, the actual time spent here is mostly going to be chilling. It's mostly going to be doing regular things and being a ordinary hero who goes around helping save the day, um, getting kittens out of trees, and helping people with cooking and a wide range of different things. I'll also say that Luciano uses their magic and their other abilities to help people be prosperous, using their powers from generic Totally Not Mind Control and Chronicle to actually make the Kingdom of Hyrule a better place overall. By the time a full decade rolls around, they are actually... Um, going to be quite sad to be leaving the setting in much the same way as they were sad to be leaving Shrek. Um, now, in Shrek, they were an epic hero who engaged in fancy politics and who built alliances and who saved the world from both necromantic and barbarian hordes. But in this particular setting, they did save, at the very least, the Kingdom of Hyrule. They just did it fairly early because that was a mostly personal scale quest. It wasn't something that required an army. It was something that Luciano the Jumper had the skills to be able to do hilariously quickly. So that is something that was very handy. Um, it's also worth noting that a wide range of perks really helped nullify even some of the more significant drawbacks, like the Dark World uh, corruption drawback that made it so that when we were in the Dark World we were transforming. Um, State Refresh is one of the perks that made it really difficult for that particular drawback to keep a hold on Luciano. So it may have overcome the flat immunity that Luciano had through uh, the normally flat immunity that Luciano had through one of their night perks, but it wasn't completely strong enough to simply overwhelm the other perk that Luciano had, which made it so that effects like this 
are done away with every five seconds. So yeah, Luciano would transform while they were in the dark world, but they wouldn't be able to trans they wouldn't be able to be kept transformed for long. So that's just something that is worth noting, and that is definitely something that is going to be worth keeping in mind moving forward, because in the future we are going to be going to more settings with transformative effects and other things like this. But yeah, by the time the decade rolls around, by the time the end of the decade rolls around, Luciana the Jumper has definitely befriended countless people throughout both the light world and the dark world, and has gone out of their way to help keep both safe from all sorts of threats, such as those loyal to Ganon, and also other more chaotic opportunistic foes um, they have built a reputation as a hero and they have helped keep the kingdom safe from all sorts of threats so it has been uh, honestly pretty exciting time even though the main crux of their adventure happened very quickly but when the setting rolls to a finish Luciano is more than happy to feel their settings to feel their surroundings blur and blink and then find themselves in their personal reality when they find themselves in their personal reality they are again standing in front of their benefactor who welcomes them home and uh, and encourages them to go and pick a new setting it is worth noting for those of you who are curious that we may eventually do a video on luciano's personal reality but in case you don't remember what it looks like it is basically um decently luxurious housing that is mostly focused on being a place where luciano can rest their head and also a place where luciano can train and hone their skills and make sure that they never get overly rusty um, now that the adventure has come to a close Luciano goes and looks for the next jump um, they're going to be taking in my head there's always themes that the benefactor recommends but um, the benefactor actually does not choose for Luciano um, at least not yet. Luciano has proven themselves to be an entertaining, dynamic jumper who will engage with the setting in a wide range of different ways, especially now that they have unique abilities and that they can be relied upon to do all sorts of cool things. So we are going to go ahead and make this video draw to a close. I know that this was a hilariously short story time video, but the fact of the matter is that this particular setting was a very fascinating match for Luciano because there wasn't really anything here in the setting that would be so wildly powerful that it could seriously pose a risk to our jumper, especially because Luciano actually does have one-ups. They have uh, one-ups in a number of ways, but most notably, they have actually the perfect one-up for the setting. They have the Super Mario 64 one-up, which makes it so that if they're defeated, they're simply shunted out of the place that they're in and they um, are exhausted afterwards. But in this particular setting with multiple different worlds, that simply means that if Luciano were ever to fall in the dark world, they would be spat back out in the light world or potentially vice versa if they were defeated in the light world. And they would be able to resume fighting rather than have to deal with any normal consequences that occur with dying. So this really was just not a place where Luciano could be defeated. Um, that definitely happens with jumpers especially with jumpers who are doing the Luciano approach to jumping where you start off doing things fairly slowly and you gradually build up powers but by the time you go to your bigger settings especially if you have any sort of uncapper um, or something like that your powers have grown beyond what they should feasibly be possible uh, where th they've grown greater than they feasibly should be able to. Something like Luciano's telekinesis, now that they've had three decades worth of experience with using it at the end of this particular setting, is going to be strong enough to hurl buildings around, at the very least small ones. Maybe not skyscrapers, but definitely um, something like maybe a public library um, or a house or something like that. 
So definitely keep that in mind when you're attempting to think of the sort of fighting style that Luciano employs, especially because even though Luciano is in fact a skill to telekinetic, they're actually capable of using a wide range of other abilities to be truly devastating in battle and to be more than capable of saving the day. Um, it's worth noting that after so many adventures that have been fairly high power, um, where even Shrek has ended up being a surprisingly exhilarating, dangerous setting for Luciano the Jumper, we're probably going to do a handful of jumps that are not necessarily like this one, where there's like no threats, but jumps where um, the activities are not going to be necessarily super heroism. I am thinking that pretty soon we are going to be visiting a couple of the settings that um, are just must-dos for me, settings like generic cartoon world, generic cubicle, and generic convention as well as Super Mario Sunshine, Metroid, um, and other video game settings. I'm also fairly certain that in the near future we probably will do an Elder Scrolls jump or a Fallout jump, both of which are just fantastic. I have a wide range of ideas in mind for those settings. So Luciano the Jumper's Chain is far from finished. It's just that now they have become strong enough, and especially as of this jump with A Wish for Peace and the Master Sword, they have gained um, abilities and a equipment that are going to be remarkable at helping them defeat evil, and they are entering into a more heroic stage of their development. That said, I hope that all of you are having a truly wonderful day. I cannot wait to hear from you all, and I can't wait to do next week's um, jump videos. Let's go ahead and have a wonderful day, everyone. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye!